Hi everyone, here is Azinis again, and we have prepared some of the news for you with me, Vanessa. The economic pillar of Timorese ministerial officials participated in the training offered by the ASEAN Secretariat from Jakarta. Five ASEAN Secretariat personnel in Jakarta carry out training for 70 Timorese ministerial officials, especially those who are part of the economic pillar, and the aim of the training is to empower them, since Timor-Leste preparing itself to become the member of ASEAN organization in the future. Joaquin Amaral, the Coordinating Minister of Economic Affairs, explained this is very significant training for Timor-Leste, where it will demonstrate Timor-Leste's readiness to comply with all the requirements in order to become the permanent member of ASEAN. Agora, it is observador. We are currently holding the observer status with motion that allows us to take part in all the ASEAN level meetings and we need to comprehend more the whole mechanism process related to all ASEAN sectoral meetings. And we thank the Jakarta-based ASEAN Secretariat that arrived today to carry out the three days empowerment training for our officials and this is also supported by the ADB. It's an important momentum to show Timor-Leste's readiness and well prepared to comply with all the requirements that ASEAN has offered to us. ASEAN uh, for Baita. The ASEAN Affairs Director of Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Cooperation, Milena Rongel, adds that there are agreements and politics in ASEAN and this training itself is a capacity building training for the knowledge of the economic pillar of the ministerial officials. There are numerous ASEAN agreements, economics, socio cultural, and politicals that we have seen in the training. Capacity building training program of the economic pillar. Thus, our ministerial officials will perform according to those agreements and become a main beneficiaries and be familiar with the political and the agreements and how to align and harmonize our laws as well as with some of the existing ASEAN politics. Based on the plan, the training will be run for three days and will continue to be carried out for policy and law pillars officials as well. At the present, the ASEAN state members has agreed Timor-Leste's accession in the ASEAN with an observer status. To complete the accession criteria and become a permanent member of ASEAN, Timor-Leste needs to adopt more than 300 agreements. South Korea ready to support Timor-Leste's accession to ASEAN. The Korean ambassador to Timor-Leste, Shin man Taik, met with Timorese President of Republic, Jose ramos -Orta, to discuss the cooperation between South Korea and Timor-Leste. man Taik said, Korea is ready to support Timor-Leste's development and its preparation to join ASEAN. Uh, I just recently assumed the post as the Republic of Korea's ambassador in Timor-Leste. I paid a courtesy visit to the president and we discussed many issues such as the cooperation to contribute to Timor-Leste's development. Korea was also suffers after the war and there were destructions. And as the ambassador, I would like to introduce and reapply the experience in order to help Timor-Leste development. Important areas that was discussed between me and the president was regarding Timor-Leste's efforts to join ASEAN. The Korean government committed to support Timor-Leste's preparation, especially on the development of human resources. And we are ready any time when Timor-Leste needs us. And we will support Timor-Leste become ASEAN's full member. Mantek also asked Timorese government to support South Korea in Busan's export that will be held in 2030. South Korea has supported Timor-Leste so far since 1999. South Korea sent its military to carry out the intervention and peacekeeping operations. The United Nations also arrives to provide security to the Timorese. Since the beginning of the Timor-Leste's independence, South Korea had established a diplomatic relation with Timor-Leste in order to support Timor-Leste's development. South Korean ambassador ready to cooperate with Timor-Leste on bringing back the illegal Timorese workers in South Korea in short time. The South Korean ambassador to Timor-Leste informed the journalists after his meeting with the Timorese president, Jose ramos -Orta. The aim of the meeting was to discuss about priority areas as to contribute to Timor-Leste's development. As the new ambassador, I'm here to fill the post. I'm in the process of identifying the illegal workers. I believe and will put efforts in order to prevent the increase of the current numbers, as well as to continue maintain the good relationship between Timor-Leste and South Korea, and make sure it won't be impacted by these illegal workers' issues. Uh, 
Shin Man Taek explained, South Korea is ready and will provide maximum support for these issues. Therefore, in short time, there will be tracking to workers who bind it with illegal contract in South Korea. I cannot assure the exact period and the deadline of it, but I believe the collaboration with relevant partners for this matter and continue maintain this program to run well in the future as the contribution to the development of both countries. Each year, the government of Timor-Leste, through the Secretary of State for Vocational Training and Employment, or CEFOPE, actively sends Timorese workers abroad. In fact, the real condition shows the amount of workers whom the contract ended are not willingly returned to Timor-Leste, but continue to work illegally in the South Korea. The UN representative met with Timorese president and discussed the continuous cooperation and threatening relationship between UN and Timor-Leste. The United Nations Resident Coordinator in Timor-Leste, Funmi Balogun, said the aim of the meeting with the President of the Republic, Jose Ramos Horta, to continue to strengthen relationship between the United Nations and Timor-Leste. UNDP and I, the UN Resident Coordinator, met with the President to discuss generally about the upcoming elections, about youth employment. We spoke about the LDC ascension of um, Timor-Leste and the meeting that is going to happen in Doha in March. So those were some of the things we discussed. While meeting with the Timorese President of Republic, Funmi Balogun expressed that the United Nations always supports Timor-Leste and ready to assist Timor-Leste, especially the parliamentary election, which will be held this year, 2023. The elections, the elections. yes, we discussed that and um, I assured the President that the UN is very ready to support um, the government in the um, conduct of the election. So all of the um, necessary equipment, including the ink, we are procuring and it's going to be ready whatever time the President calls for the elections. Yes, so we did discuss that. The United Nations has been supporting Timor-Leste in various areas long before its independence and had established great cooperation between the UN and Timor-Leste. And the United Nations had committed to continue to support Timor-Leste's development process now and in the future. Timor-Leste's President of Republic will decrease the parliamentary elections calendar sooner. In the mid of February 2023, the Timorese President of Republic will decrease the schedule of the Timor-Leste's parliamentary election after concluded consultation with the government and eight political parties who obtained major seats in the national parliament. The head of state explained there is possibility for the general election to be held on May or June this year, 2023. <laughs> Next Monday, I'm going to announce for May or June, and I can't say the details, and I have not been concluded it, the consultation, as I still need to talk with Shanana. Horta said during his consultation with the political parties, each leader of the parties presents its own reason in regards to the parliamentary election schedule decrees. But the head of state will comply with the constitutional law, which declared that each legislature can only assume the office term of up to five years. Meanwhile, the head of state will also discuss with the minor parties who might not have seats in the parliament before declaring the parliamentary election date of 2023. Timor Leste sent heartfelt condolences to the government and people of Turkey and Syria. Wednesday, 8 of February 2023, the Timorese President of Republic, Jose Ramos Horta, on behalf of the Timorese, expressed solidarity and heartfelt condolences to the people of Turkey and Syria and their government after experiencing a devastated impact of a 7.8 of magnitude of earthquake that occurred on February 6, 2023, in Turkey and Syria. Uh, earthquake, terremoto, affected Liliu. The earthquake affected Turkey and Syria, as well as other countries. The strongest one is in Turkey and Syria. I have sent message as a manifestation and informed them of our solidarity, as well as our condolences to the people and the government of Turkey and Syria. At least 10 provinces devastated by two earthquakes that killed more than 5,200 people and left a trail of destruction across a wide area of southern Turkey and neighboring Syria. But this is only a temporary number. Meanwhile, more than 12,000 search and rescue personnel were working in the affected areas, with another 9,000 troops were also sent to the affected areas.
President Tayyip Erdogan called a state of emergency to bolster their responses. I sent to Indonesia to intensify talks on code for South China Sea. Indonesian Foreign Minister said Indonesian plans to intensify talks with China and other Southeast Asian countries to finalize a code of conduct for the disputed South China Sea amid escalating tensions in the strategic waterway. We discuss also about the COC, commitment of members to conclude the negotiation of the COC as soon as possible is obvious, bearing in mind the need to have a substantive, effective, and actionable COC. Members are also committed to promote implementation of DOC. Indonesia is ready to host more rounds of the COC negotiation this year. I'm also pleased that all member states support Indonesia's intention to convene several flagship events under the ASEAN Indo-Pacific Forum as implementation of ASEAN Outlook on the Indo-Pacific. Negotiations on the Code of Conduct, a proposed framework to help tackle territorial and maritime disputes in the waterway, have stalled for years as some member states prioritize bilateral ties with China over a regional consensus. Marsuri said Indonesia is preparing to host a round of negotiations on the Code of Conduct this year, the first taking place in March. ASEAN members the Philippines, Vietnam, Malaysia and Brunei all have overlapping claims with China in the strategic waterway. ASEAN foreign ministers met in Jakarta to conduct a frank discussion on the situation in Myanmar and solidified Timor-Leste as the group's 11th member. Foreign ministers from the ASEAN met in Jakarta, kicking off Indonesia's chairmanship of the Southeast Asian bloc. Indonesia's foreign minister Retno Marsudi said their chairmanship will be geared towards a frank discussion with Myanmar and their ongoing crisis. The meeting is dedicated to discuss the Myanmar issue in an open, in-depth, and frank manner as one family. I brief the meeting on the Indonesia approaches on Myanmar as chair. For Indonesia, the five point of consensus is the main reference to address the Myanmar crisis. All members during the working lunch render their full support to the approaches of Indonesia in addressing the situation in Myanmar. During the working lunch, we discussed and agreed to urge significant progress in the implementation of five points of consensus to pave the way for inclusive national dialogue in Myanmar. The meeting also solidified East Timor, officially called Timor-Leste, as the group's 11th member after they were admitted in November 2022. President Joko Widodo had said Indonesia plans to send a top general to Myanmar to talk to its junta leaders in the hope of showing Myanmar's military rulers how Indonesia made a successful transition to democracy. Thailand loads liberalization facilitation of trade between China and Thailand. Thai Deputy Prime Minister Anutin Charm Virakul has hailed the liberalization and facilitation of the trade and investment between China and Thailand. It has brought huge economic development opportunities for Thailand. During an interview with China Global Television Network, Charm Virakul, who is also the Public Health Minister of Thailand, highlighted the profound mutual trust between China and Thailand when commenting on the multilateral trading system between China and ASEAN countries since the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership RCEP, agreement came into effect in 2022. I think this is the result of both countries being well prepared to expand trade opportunities. Thailand has also strengthened its transportation system to increase the efficiency of receiving goods from China, some of which are transported by sea and some by water, mainly through the Mekong River, while others by rail. Now, especially in terms of rail transports, goods from Thailand have been able to enter China through Laos. This is an important cornerstone of the strong relationship between Thailand and China. As we build mutual trust between us, the two countries can trade conveniently on the basis of mutual trust, which also brings great opportunities for Thailand. 
the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership is the world's largest trade deal so far, comprises 10 ASEAN member states, namely Brunei, Cambodia, Laos, Indonesia, Malaysia, Myanmar, the Philippines, Singapore, Thailand, Vietnam, together with the five trade partners of China, Japan, South Korea, Australia, and New Zealand covering roughly 30% of the world's gross domestic product and population and including a mixture of developed and developing countries. China sends second search and rescue team to help victims in Turkey and Syria. Taiwan dispatched a second search and rescue team of 90 personnel and two search dogs to help with disaster relief operations in Turkey and Syria. Taiwan Premier Chen Qinzhen was at the Taiwan Taoyuan International Airport to send the team off. Chen said Turkey was the first to send a search and rescue team to aid Taiwan when it was hit by an earthquake on September 21, 1999. According to the Taiwan Central News Agency, the first team of 40 personnel and three search and rescue dogs has arrived in Anada, Turkey, after a day of earthquake. The deadly earthquake of magnitude 7.8 struck central Turkey and northwest Syria on Monday, February 6, 2023, bringing the death toll in both countries to more than 7,800, and this is only provisional number. Thank you everyone, we will see you again sooner. Enjoy your weekend, stay safe and stay healthy.